Hi, I'm Seraphim, and in today's video, I'm going to reveal the fundamental reason why empaths attract narcissists and how to stop. So if you've been asking yourself why you keep attracting narcissistic jerks who take advantage of your kindness, and you want to change this once and for all, this video goes out to you. Welcome to the Empowered Empath. Today I'm jumping right in because the empath versus narcissist dynamic fires me up. I have to warn you right now though, if you're looking for a video to justify staying in an abusive relationship and using empathy as an excuse to do that, this is not the video for you. Empaths have far more influence over this dynamic than we often realize. And that means we have influence to change it. Okay, so before you can break a pattern of behavior or a habit, you need to understand why it's happening. And part of awakening is confronting our limiting beliefs and behaviors so we can make powerful, intentional changes in our lives. I'm going to give you three transformational steps today to help you make room for and attract the right kind of people into your life. But why do empaths attract narcissists in the first place? The answer on a universal and energetic level is that empaths and narcissists are mirrors for one another. They reflect back to one another the aspects of the self which the other has rejected. What I mean by this is the empath looks at the narcissist and thinks, how can you possibly be so cold and callous? I could never do that. The narcissist looks at the empath and thinks, how can you be so weak and vulnerable and naive? I would never do that. <laughs> So in this way, the empath actually has a great deal to learn from the narcissist about self-love and self-care, putting the self first, essentially receiving love. The narcissist has a great deal to learn from the empath about giving love. And I will say that empaths don't tend to be great at receiving love. So brief note here, guys, I'm not going to focus on the narcissist learning. The purpose of this video is to help my fellow empaths break the cycle of abusive relationships and to rise and shine in your gifts as you awaken. You have so much more influence than you realize. You just have to step into your magic. And today I want to help you start to do that. So if you're ready to own your superpower, type rise and shine for me in the comments below. All right, so until we learn or overcome the lessons currently set before us, the universe is going to keep presenting us with similar circumstances. I said that empaths need to learn self-love and receiving love from narcissists because so many empaths are obsessive about being a good guy. And this means that any behavior they perceive as being bad or negative could make them a bad guy. People pleasers, I'm talking to you. So if you have a hard time saying no, or if you're always putting the well-being of other people before your own, bottom line, this is why you're attracting narcissists. Narcissists are attracted to your resources, emotional, energetic, mental, material. And if you're not exercising discernment with whom you're sharing your resources, you're making yourself prime rhubarb for narcissists. Empaths tend to value the emotions of other people over their own. And while that may sound noble, it's actually devastatingly self-destructive. And it shows where there's a real need for deep healing. From a universal perspective, there's no better archetype to illuminate this for us than the narcissist. Empaths actually need to learn to have compassion for narcissists in a way that doesn't ask them to change. And that doesn't judge them because they experience the world differently than us. Also, to acknowledge where we may benefit from taking a cue from our narcissistic friends. Saying no, for example, and not feeling any guilt around that no. Self-love, self-care, and receiving love is the lesson that the narcissist brings to the empath. This is why you are attracting narcissists. So now I'm going to give you three steps so you can stop. <laughs> Step one, take your power back. Acknowledge your role in the dynamic. 
Pointing fingers, blaming people, pretty much guarantees that this pattern is going to continue. So acknowledge your role and commit to making different choices for yourself. Being an empath is not an excuse to stay in an abusive relationship. So you need to get really honest with yourself about what you allow, what you enable, and why. And yes, this includes family. So step one is take your power back. Acknowledge your role in the dynamic and you have a different choice, even if it's a hard one. Step two, be authentic always. This means being honest with that friend when you just don't feel like going to the movie tonight because you're exhausted and maybe you need to stay home and recharge. And that's okay. If we want to have people in our lives who support our well-being, we need to give them the opportunity to do so. And empaths can be so focused on giving, we forget to take a step back and actually be open to receive. Living in authenticity means that we have an integrity of the self and that we are living in a vulnerable honesty. It also means that we know what our deal breakers are. So this is where I'm gonna talk about boundaries. Think about this for a second. Do you know what your boundaries are? What your deal breakers are? Do you communicate them? Do you have people in your lives who are constantly stepping over these boundaries? People with wishy-washy boundaries are exactly the kind of target that narcissists will latch onto. People who care about your well-being and who want to see you thrive, they'll respect your boundaries. They, they're not gonna get mad when you say no sometimes. So enforce your deal breakers, enforce your boundaries, put your well-being first, and the narcissists will fall away. When you're living in this authenticity, the narcissist will fall away and naturally make room for people who want to see you shine, who want to see you thrive. So step two is be authentic, always. Be honest. Step three. Let go of the responsibility for your narcissist's healing. This is a tough one for empaths because we tend to see the best in everyone. We tend to fall in love with potential, but not everybody is interested in fulfilling that potential. So empaths can get stuck in an endless cycle of trying to change their narcissist. This actually becomes a somewhat selfish pursuit if that person doesn't want to change. Empath. You must accept that you cannot force anyone to hear a message or learn a lesson they are not ready for. You also cannot save anyone. And that's not your purpose. Your purpose is to support those who've already chosen to save themselves. People must make that choice for themselves first. Then we can guide them, offer support and advice, but they have to come to that on their own. We get to choose who we engage with or who we don't engage with, and you do not have to tolerate abuse. Your sweet and healing presence is meant to be a gift in the lives of those around you. So focus instead on your own healing. Set the example that you wish to see in others and allow that to be an inspiration. By setting the example, you may find that you actually inspire the change that you want to see in others. And when those people are ready to make those shifts, you are very likely the person they will come to for guidance and for help. So step number three is let go of the responsibility for your narcissist's healing, or anybody else for that matter, other than yourself. Your responsibility is your healing. Okay. Change doesn't happen all at once. It's a series of small steps that lead to meaningful shifts. So my question for you is, can you identify one behavior after watching this video that you would benefit from changing in yourself? And if so, what is it? Tell me, I wanna hear in the comments below. If you are attracting narcissists, there's nothing wrong with you. This is totally normal for empaths but it does indicate that you have rejected aspects of yourself that you deem as selfish. So my message for you is your emotions are valuable and they matter. You are worthy of love. 
An empath, if you're not filling your cup, what have you to share? This is not selfish. This is alchemy. Own your magic. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like and share it with your friends. It helps me out far more than you may realize. Also, be sure to subscribe and tap the bell to be notified whenever I post a new video. You can also visit me on Facebook under Tarot by Seraphim to learn more about my practice and to join the Empowered Empath Facebook group. Otherwise, I'll see you next Thursday. Thank you so much for watching. Blessings to all my fellow empaths and energy sensitives.